Hello, happy Tuesday everyone and welcome to Thrivecast. My name is Dr. Dominique Gemelt and I am Andrews University's Wellness Director and I am delighted that you're joining today's show, today's program. This is Thrivecast and I'm seeing people popping into our show today. Welcome to every single single person who is joining right now. I'm glad to see you here. Stay with us. We're about to get started with our special guest today that will be joining us. I'm very excited that she is taking time out of her busy schedule to talk to us about a subject today. Welcome, whoever you are. If you are an Andrews University student, welcome. If you are a member of the human race, wherever you're tuning in from, welcome. Why don't you put into the chat function down below and tell me where are you tuning in from? What country or city or place are you from? And please use the little airplane icon on the top, on the bottom to invite your followers and your friends to this show today. You don't want to miss it. This is Thrivecast. My name is Dominique and I am tuned in today from Hanover, Germany. And uh, I don't know where you are, but where I'm at, we definitely have some snow and ice outside, um, which is also fun to see sometimes. So I see a few people are riding down here. Houston, Texas. It is great to see you. I see AU. If you are a student at Andrews, you can obtain co-curricular credit for today's show. So if you're here, you're watching it at the end of the show, there will be a link available where you can click on and get co-curricular credit. We'll provide that at the end of the program today. So invite your friends, invite your fellow students. They can get credit for today's show. So without further ado, I'm getting ready to welcome our guest on the show today. This is Thrivecast, guys. And our guest today is no one other than the wonderful Dr. Kim Knowlton. Kim Knowlton is the department chair for health and exercise science at La Sierra University in Southern California. And I have, it's a huge, great honor that I have known Kim for many years. And Kim is really, I'm just going to say it, she's a firecracker. She loves life. She is an amazing, positive, inspiring human being. And I have been privileged to hear her life story. And she is one of those wonderful examples of how to thrive in life. And so today she's with us. We're going to talk about a specific topic. And so without further ado, I'm going to welcome her to the show. So I'm going to try to pull her in. And I see Brazil is in the house. So welcome. Thank you so much. So here we go. I'm going to send her to join our program. Very nice. So stay with us. Invite your friends. Invite your people. And I see a picture. That's good for starters, but I see. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Welcome, Kim. It is nice to see Hi, you. Hi, Dr. Kim. How are you? Good. I'm great. And I'm really glad that it worked out well. You are here with us live from Southern California while I'm sitting in Germany. Isn't that crazy? Oh, yes. I know. We can do this anywhere in the world. I like that. I love this. I love this. I love this. And I'm really excited that you're taking time out of your very busy schedule. For you, it's early in the morning. For me, it's in the evening. And um, that you're well, willing to come here to just share a little bit of your story, your expertise, and so that we have the chance to really interact with the world. I don't know if you already saw, but we have people from various countries that are here today. Mm -hmm. We've got people from Michigan, from Andrews University, but whoever you are watching, welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here, and I wanna invite you today, just for a few moments, to listen to us, to be open, and to be willing to consider how we can all make changes to change our lives for the better. And Kim, it looks like you have a pretty big fan club club that's joining us down here. Do. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. We will see. I do have a, I, I don't know if they're on there right now. Oh, my sister just joined. Woohoo from Arizona. Nice. Nice. <laughs> and I do have a number of, of students at Andrews who I know quite well. And um, I will give them a shout out. I'm looking for them. I'm looking for them. <laughs> yes, I saw a few already on here that I think belong to you in the chat function down here. But very, very cool. Kim, um, it is my pleasure to have you here today. Tell us just a little bit about yourself. Who are you? And yes, who are you? <laughs> 
Oh, hey, I just got to say one thing. My son has just joined and his girlfriend. So hi, Jake and Andy. <laughs> okay, a little bit about me. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and start um, from Bering Springs because I am, I grew up in Bering Springs and um, I went to Andrews Academy. I went to, I went to um, Ruth Murdoch Elementary, Andrews Academy, Andrews University, and I finished there with my uh, master's in physical therapy. So I am an alum of Andrews University. Wonderful. And, also, and the PT department. And after that, I got married to my husband, Croy Knowlton, who also went to Andrews University. And so we moved out here to sunny Southern California. And my whole plan was to just finish my doctorate in uh, public health and preventive care and move right back to Michigan. But you know what? We never left. We had three boys out here. You kind of get into the whole, um, you know, friend thing and family thing. And we yeah. started just building a good base of friends for our, our, our family. Yeah. So I had Josh, Jake, and Javen. So I think some of you know Josh and Jake. They went to Andrews or Jake's still there. And uh, Josh is a uh, alum now of Andrews and is in the dental school out here in Loma Linda. Um, and then after that, I've been here since. I've never gone back to Andrews, but we visit pretty much every year. So after that, I finished my doctorate out here at Loma Linda University, and then I did a, a number of various jobs. You know, you have all these plans that you want to do, but it sometimes doesn't go exactly the way you want it to go. Right. So I ended up homeschooling for 12 years. Oh, wow. Um, I homeschooled my kids, yeah, for 12 years. Then after that, I, I um, got this opportunity to adjunct at La Sierra University. So I started adjuncting Lifetime Fitness, which I, I knew uh, Dr. Kamelt was there, and she was actually my boss. <laughs> so I went ahead and I um, adjuncted Lifetime Fitness for a year, and then I ended up getting a permanent position there um, in, the, in the Health and Exercise Science Department. So I was doing that for a couple of years, and then, I, and then I slid right into the the um, chair position, and I've been doing that. This is my fourth year being chair at, in the health and exercise science department, which has been a huge learning curve. And, but I love the students. And even though I was a physical therapist first, okay, I really enjoy the student aspect, the teaching aspect mm -hmm. of it, and also mentoring students mm -hmm. to go into physical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, I have the connections. We, you know, we've done some things with Andrews even and have like a, um, a preferred agreement with Andrews and us. And so we work together. So that is kind of my professional career, but I can tell you my, my favorite job are my as being a mom, Lovely. being a mom to three boys. That's an adventure. And you cannot, and I know today is about movement. You cannot not move with three boys. Yep. I think when they were young, we were always moving. We were always doing something, but it was, it was an adventure. I should tell you, I should say that, but, um, <laughs> and it still is, it still is. But, um, I, as far as hobbies and, and listen to my hobbies, because this is kind of, um, an irony of all of this. This is about movement. I'm in health and exercise science, Yep. but my hobbies, I love to knit and crochet. What do you do? You sit and you do <laughs> nice, okay. nice, nice. Yes. Knit and crochet. I love watching the British Bake Off. Okay, that is one of my favorite shows. I just see them all. I did. Okay, I've known you for a long time, and I literally did not know about any of those three. So, oh. I just learned something really new that you like the British Bake Off and knitting and crochet. Oh. Okay, that's awesome. I love this. But you know what? This is yep. cool too. Is it shows you again how many facets we all have to ourselves and that's mm -hmm. good it's good mm -hmm. to have different interests and to spread yourself out there i think it's enriching so i think that's awesome okay. wonderful okay keep going anything yeah. else you want to share about yourself okay well okay i am a big music buff too i love music i'm i play the piano the flute i i sing and i i was I was the director of music at Azure Hills Church out here in California for about nine years. Uh -huh. when, my, when I was homeschooling my kids, I wanted to find a way for them to develop um, being, having an upstage presence, not being yeah. nervous. So I volunteered, well, I still nominated me, but I volunteered. I, I went ahead and did that um, as far as the, I mean, the music portion of um, Azure Hills. 
and I was in charge of all the Christmas programs and you know the special music. So my kids were kind of you know up in front as far as music goes. And so I know some of you see Jake and Josh when they were there at Andrews. They're used to it from toddlerhood on up. So yep, yep. and it's been any moms and dads. Yeah, go no, ahead, go ahead. Any moms and dads out there, any moms and dads out there that are that are wanting their child to to not be so nervous up front, be able to do something like that, especially music, you got to start them young, yep. get them used to it. And, mm -hmm. and do it that way. Well, it's, it's, it's really, it's really fun to hear a little bit of your background and your versatility and like, you know, how really um, physical therapy, sports, uh, exercise, science is, is a big part of your life, but also how really your right. passion are your voice and being a mom and the family and, and then also all these other things you just mentioned. And just one tiny note to what you said, um, I know music is important to you guys because music is really important to me too. And I'm yes. really, I'm really mm -hmm. proud and thankful to say that your boys have been in my band. So I think that's I been, I, that was, I, I just, I'm super grateful. They are so talented. So anyways, Kim, um, we usually start every show with that. I ask my guests the same three questions. And before we do that, I want okay. to welcome everyone who is just joining us or popping in. This is Thrivecast. This is episode number three of season two. And today we have Dr. Kim Knowlton from Southern California mm -hmm. on the show, an expert mm -hmm. in exercise science and mm -hmm. health sciences, and someone who has a story in life where she has really shown how you can thrive despite your circumstance. And so I hope that each mm -hmm. one of you can listen, be inspired. If you're a student at Andrews University, you need to stay tuned in the program. If you would like to earn co-curricular credit at the end of it, we'll tell you where you can find the link at the end of the show. Feel free to still invite your friends, your colleagues, wherever to with the little airplane icon on the bottom right to join us in this live stream you do not want to miss this experience and this conversation and so with that I'm gonna launch into my three questions I ask every single guest you only have 30 seconds to answer for each one okay mm -hmm. so it's a oh. short it's a short quick round of questions okay so are you ready okay, okay get buckled up here we yes, go yes, yes. all right I think what is your favorite fruit and why Fruit, fruit, fruit. Okay. Oh man, that's a hard one. I love several different kinds, but okay. Avocado. Some people don't think it's a fruit. It is because it's a seed. You know, we teach nutrition. Yeah. Perfect. I <laughs> um, love it. Avocado. You know, I could, I'll tell you avocado though. I used to hate it until someone introduced me to s certain dishes. And now I absolutely love it. And um, yeah, that is my number one favorite fruit. It's awesome. I love avocado too. And everybody else, <laughs> eat avocado. Avocado is good for you. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two question. Describe your current mood using weather metaphor. Hmm. Okay. As I look out the window right now in sunny California, I got, I've got to say one reason we're here. Sunny, yes. 72 degrees, blue, clear skies a lot of the time. <laughs> That's what I love. And right now I feel that way. So I, my window is open and I'm looking out there and Great. it is, it is sunny. Well, I don't think it's 72 quite yet. It will be later on, but it's clear blue skies. Wonderful. It's great to be here. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm happy. And you can see it in your face all the time. You're a sunshiny <laughs> person. So I love that. Great. Okay. Question mm -hmm. number three, what are you not good at? Oh, math. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Uh, okay, let me think. Because when any when my sons start doing algebra or pre-cal or something, I'm just like, don't don't ask me questions. Ask your dad. I can't. I can't. But one thing that I can do is just if there's a sale going on and there's thirty percent and there's a price, I can figure out how much that costs. I'm used to doing that. But other than that. I defer to someone else. Math is not my You're strong. Saying, which, which is really funny. It's really funny because being in, in health and exercise science, we actually work quite a bit with numbers as well, right? Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it's really funny too because I recently was going through some boxes and I was looking mm -hmm. at my old um, transcripts from high school. And as you know, I obviously am also in health and exercise science, at least my study background and my PhD and so on. Um, but what's really interesting is, is I actually had on my 10th grade transcript, I had a, I had a D minus in chemistry, physics <laughs> and biology. And I was like, and I was actually a good student. It was, I was a good student otherwise, but chemistry, physics and biology, I was like, and then at the end of the oh, day, man. I go into science 
but really what that tells you too, guys is uh, really truly right. um, you know you, you you will find out what your passions are and certain things you can learn like just because you're not good at something doesn't mean you can't mm -hmm. learn it or work through it so right. thanks for sharing mm -hmm. those facts about yourself okay yes. Kim so on our show um, this show is called Thrivecast so this is about mm -hmm. the idea of thriving and we've talked quite a bit in the previous episodes on what does it mean to thrive? And, 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 you know, how do people interpret that? And have you even ever thought about it? So listen, guys, mm -hmm. everyone listening, if I ask you this question right now and you had to straight up answer it, are you currently thriving? That is a question we should ask mm -hmm. ourselves. And so um, a subcategory of our made to thrive health philosophy that we have developed very, very carefully with a group of experts that take into consideration the various different facets of what it means to thrive and live a life well, there's so many aspects to it. So today we want to zone in on one particular aspect, and that aspect is called made to move. Okay, so what does that mean, made to move? So when we talk about made to, we believe that every single one of you listening and watching, whether it's live or it's a recording, every single one of you has been created to move. So intrinsically, intricately, we, we are supposed to move. We're supposed to be in motion. And so that's what we want to talk about today. And so my first mm -hmm. question to you, Kim, is, um, so when you hear this, you know, with your background, of course, you know, feel free to expand into whatever direction you want. But when you hear this, you were made to move. What does that mean to you? Like, explain that in your words. Okay, so movement to me basically is change. Okay, trying to get out of a position you are in moving. Um, also for physically, it's just not sitting down in one place, but just getting up and just activity moving around. Yes. Um, I, I mean, I know every, I mean, you probably, if, if you've taken any class at, you know, um, like at Andrews or anything, hypokinetic disease is a term that's out there. If you don't move, that's something that you can, you can start getting symptoms for. But the thing is, as far as movement, it is something that is super important. And you know what, with this COVID, this pandemic right now, I think it's coming to the forefront a little more because yeah. what, is, what is everyone doing right now? Yeah. We are in our houses. Yeah. Um, we're not moving as much. We can't get out and do much. And we're realizing, man, if we are moving, yeah. I mean, people are starting to gain weight. Yeah. Like Glycerides are going up, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's not healthy. Yeah. And it also affects everything about your life. It affects like, the psychological aspect, mm. okay? Not to mention just, just health in general, but psychological aspect is something that's very important. Mm. You mm. have to get up, you have to move. And that is something that, that I'm always teaching in my classes right now. And, and I, that's what our department is all about, is get up and move. Don't be static. Don't be just sitting there and not changing. Don't be I mean, you got to move forward. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know what? I'm totally going to, I'm going to take this opportunity as we're talking about it, all the viewers. Okay. I don't know where you all are and what you're doing, but wherever you are, mm -hmm. let's stand up. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to stand up. <laughs> I'm going to stand up. We do this. Because we do not have to be on a chair right now. I'm standing mm -hmm. now. And if you yep. can, uh, wherever you are, mm -hmm. stand up for me for a minute and make sure your feet are about shoulder width apart, wherever mm -hmm. you are, right? And I want you to go ahead and with us together, just really quickly, a mini, mini, mini movement break. Let's do five standing squats. And you, if you can't go all the way nope. down, that's fine. But let's do that together. So wherever you are, all guys, right. I can't check you because I cannot see your screen. So you have to <laughs> promise me and pinky swear that we're doing this. Okay. So I'm going to do five squats, Kim. Are you ready to? Let's squat. Yes, let's I'm standing already. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's squat. Here we go. And five. Good. Oh, okay. And four. <laughs> three <laughs> perfect two and one perfect so that was a mini movement break and i'm going to remain yep. standing too because there's no reason why we have to sit during the show right so you were already standing so very good what you said i really picked up on one particular phrase that i think would be really worth going into depth a little bit you said at the very beginning that really movement is change I like that. Mm -hmm. I like this idea of movement is change. So something happens. So let's talk about this a little bit more. And also the idea about um, that I think is absolutely vital, how your physical movements are connected to the way you feel. In other words, to your emotions, to your mind, to, to your mental state. Let's talk about that a little bit more, maybe from a scientific perspective. Um, tell me a little bit about how can movement impact your emotions 
Okay. I mean, you know, at one time I was just watching television and it was a news, just a newscast. And they actually, and this was a few years ago. This was like maybe almost eight to 10 years ago. And I keep telling this in my classes. Um, even, the, even the mainstream news is coming out with this. They did a study about movement and depression. Yep. And they're showing which, which is better for depression. Is it movement and meds? Or is it just meds? Or is it both? And it came out to be just movement, exercise. Mm -hmm. If you're exercising, mm -hmm. that does help alleviate depression. Mm -hmm. the mental health is just, it's just very important that exercise is part of it. Yeah. Because yeah, moving, it gets the oxygen flowing, it gets the blood moving. Yeah. It also, if you, and they also even say, if you have a very important decision to make. Yeah. Okay. You need to either go out, take a walk. Don't just decide right there maybe wait a little bit, get some exercise, think it makes you think clearer. Yeah. Another thing I tell my students, I said, you need to, when you're studying, maybe get up and move. It, yeah. it shows that you can actually remember things better when you're moving. Yeah. And yeah, getting exercise, just your mind remembers things better when you're moving. Yeah. Yeah. So like walking outside, those kind of things. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. There is so much strong science and research behind the mind body connection, how both influence each other. And, you know, some of you may have heard this or may not have heard this, but basically mm -hmm. 20 minutes um, after you sit, mm -hmm. the oxygen right. flow to your brain starts decreasing. So, so, you know, we have, we know this phenomenon, whether it's a classroom setting or some kind of a meeting or whatever it is, that after a certain amount of time, people start yawning and they get sleepy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, traditionally we always say, well, if the speaker is exciting, then that won't happen. But that's actually, a, it's a physiological yeah. phenomenon. So if you sit right. there, no matter how exciting somebody is speaking, when you're not moving, you start mm -hmm. actually interfering with your body's natural processes. And that's mm -hmm. something we don't understand. So when we look at this made to move, like if we think about the origin made to move, you know, seriously, at the beginning of time, uh, life was very different. Okay, people didn't right. sit, we were not created to sit so that every once in a while, we can have a movement break, we were made to move. So every once in a while, we can have a sitting break. Mm -hmm. Right, that's right. And, uh, and so when, uh, you know, as you, you said this, we underestimate the power of motion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. I mean, right now, I mean, history, it has, it has changed over time. I mean, it, it's been easier and easier to, to do daily activities. Yeah. Okay. So like, for instance, just cooking, you know, when farmers, they have to go out early in the morning, they have to, you know, they have to milk the cows, they have to do all that kind of stuff, you know, but right now, what do we do? We can just call I guess Uber or whatever, not Uber, but what is it? Um, they bring food to you. Yeah. I, I haven't done it, yeah. but you know, right yeah. now in the yeah. pandemic, every, yeah, the Insta food or I don't know what they do, what they do, but anyway, you can call and they can drop it off at your front door. Yep. Now just think about how many calories you're not using. If you don't go into your car, go to the store, walk at least yep. over to where it is. Get yeah. it, go. That's, that's a lot of steps you're not doing. You are now sitting at home waiting for your food to come to you. You can yep. order food. Grubhub. Oh, yeah. Grubhub. Whatever. That's another one. You can order food just brought to you. There's a lot of movement that's not being done yeah. there. Yeah. And so, uh -huh. yeah, it's yeah. something that we just need to be aware of. Yeah. During this time, and you said this earlier, during this time, during this last year, um, studies are now coming out. Data is being collected. Right. Yes. Um, and mm -hmm. so we know that there's a significant percentage of adults that have been gaining weight that are moving a lot mm -hmm. less, especially what you're saying, because if you're mostly at home, you're not, you know, engaging in your regular day to day physical activity. And that mm -hmm. then has, of course, an impact on your physical body. But again, also mm -hmm. going back to that connection, it does have an impact on your emotions, how you feel, how you feel that you can master certain situations. Um, everyone knows mm -hmm. when you are when you are stressed, one of mm -hmm. the best things you can do is move just like you said, when you have a big decision to make when there's a lot of chemical processes in your body, exercise counteracts mm -hmm. and starts balancing things out. Um, and so that is really, really important. And, you know, I get a lot of questions. I don't know if you people ask you this, Kim, during this time a lot, but um, people say, well, the gyms are closed. I can't go to my gym. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what does movement have to do with a gym? What's your point? What's right. your comment on that? Oh, 
I mean, the gyms are closed. Well, they're closed out here. There, there's areas where they can go outside to work out. They, they, they put big tents in the parking lot and you can go. Nice. But you know what? You don't have to do that. I mean, because, okay, so since the pandemic started, everything closed down. I'll tell you one thing that has been open out here in California. And unfortunately, Michigan, you can't do that. But it's the golf courses. Okay. They've stayed open. Good. And my husband's a big golfer. And I used to golf. But for a while there, I hadn't, but, you know, I picked it back up. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, yes, you're out in the golf course for three, four hours, and they say, well, you're in the cart. But you know what? If you're not that great, you're walking all over yes. anyway. So yes. <laughs> you're walking yes. all over. Yep. But you can still do so many things outdoors. Okay? Yep. We, we have found many hiking areas to, to go hiking, to take walks. My husband and I, we, we are, our goal is to try to get at least 10,000 steps every day Good. okay we probably hit it about six times a week like last night we didn't hit it and we were walking around our house nice seriously nice. we had we had a show on and we were walking around the house and uh, i know jake knows what i'm talking about so we do that and so we can get ten thousand steps you can do it yeah. you can do it it just has to be a goal and you just have to um you just have to just you yeah. know make sure it's part of your schedule. That's one thing you have to make sure it's part of your schedule and yeah, do it. Absolutely. Um, and something that I think is important, I love debunking myths because they're interestingly, um, while exercise is not um, necessarily a secret subject to society, yeah. there's still mm -hmm. so many myths about it. And I think um, it's important, mm -hmm. especially during, like I said, for example, people saying, I can't exercise because I don't have a gym. Well, you don't need a gym. If you have a body, you can no. exercise. And you mm -hmm. know what? Big, yeah. really important part. Even if you don't, have certain parts of your body or even if you are if you have a challenge yeah. with a part of your body you can do what right. you can do um for example just as a quick quick uh, side story to that um about six years ago um i suffered a pretty severe back injury and it was due to mm -hmm. a lot of the competitive sports i played and also an acute situation and i lost mobility of my right leg in other words i could not move my right leg normally aka i could not walk properly and for me right. as an athlete mm -hmm. and a fitness professional that was really traumatic mm -hmm. and i had to learn how to utilize a situation where I could choose to, in quotes, become the victim of the situation, or I could make a choice to see what can I, what can I do? Okay. Mm -hmm. I could, I can't do what I, what I could always do before, AKA Corona, right. but mm -hmm. I can revisit the whole situation and say, okay, mm -hmm. now how can I adapt? How can I make the best of it? And what can I do? And I started completely right. trying like, for during my physical uh, therapy, where I didn't even know if I would walk normally again, my physical therapist says it's 50 50. We don't know if your nerves are going to re regenerate because they were so badly impacted. And so, you know, I, I tried to do what I could. But my point here is I could not proceed with my normal routine. I could not do what I was always doing. I had to change the way I thought. And it was up to me right. every day to decide is today an opportunity or is it a hindrance? And that's our right. our choice, right? Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. another question to you, you said earlier, you know, movement um, is change. Um, let's explore mm -hmm. that a little bit more. What do you mean by that? How do we change? T talk a little bit more about movement as change. Well, there can be two ways to look at it. There's, I mean, the physical, the physical aspect of movement, just getting from one place to another, that's, that's that. But now I look at it at a broader, um, a broader way is, that you can change where you are in your life, mm -hmm. move to a different area if you are not thriving, yeah. okay? Yeah. And I know you and I have been through some of this and you can see yourself, you're in like a dark, deep pit and you don't know what to do. You need to change. You need to get out of there, yeah. okay? Yeah. So, so there's a lot of things that, uh, that go into that. And a lot of it, you know, psychologically, psychological wellness, how are you making your choices? Is your emotional wellness okay, there's a lot of things that you can do to help that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there's, there's physiological things to do, like, let's say, you, are you getting enough sleep? Mm -hmm. I mean, because that affects the way you make, you make choices. Yeah. If you're always sleeping under five hours a, a night, you're not going to be able to make great choices. Yeah. Your mind is only going to be muddled. There's some things that you can, I mean, other behaviors. I, I, right now I'm teaching behavior change class and we go through different things, yep. which used to be your class. <laughs> and it, and um, we used to, we're talking about different things, ways that you can change your behavior. Yeah. 
And a lot of it is the mind. Yeah. Like you were saying, you have to have a, a, you have to make a choice. You have to do things, but there's also things that you can do yeah. to help that. Yeah. Like sit down and make a, make a plan. Yeah. Where do you want to go? What, what are your goals in life? Yeah. You got to write that down. If you don't know, then you're going to be stuck. You're mm -hmm. not going to be able to change where you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have a goal, like I know a lot of students out there, they're, you know, they're in school. Their goal is to, to finish college and to get to this certain, certain area. But maybe you're, maybe you're stuck right now. The pandem pandemic has done a number on you and you can't get out of it. Talk to someone, use yeah. your resources, yeah. contact a mentor on campus. I see lots of students um, just trying to talk to them. Now they're trying to decide, what am I gonna do with my life? Yeah. You know, or what's the best thing? So we discussed this. What are your personal preferences? Would you, do you yeah. wanna, do you wanna be with groups? Do you want, are you, are you a goal oriented person? Yeah. Do you wanna do yeah. the same thing every day? Do, yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff. So reach out to somebody and get help. Do not just stay there in one area and not move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I love this and I love how you're describing it. What comes to mind, what comes to mind are a couple of different quotes and concepts that, mm -hmm. you know, um, some of my mentors taught me early on, but of course we have the law in physics. Okay. An object yeah. that stays at rest, will stay at rest and object in motion mm -hmm. will, will continue to be in motion. And so that's important to understand because if, and then the second concept to that is if you're expecting a different outcome without moving and without really? making a change, then I'm sorry, that's just stupidity because you're not going to. Yeah. So, I mean, if you, if you sit there and you hope things are going to change, but you don't move to make a change, things right. are not going to change. Right. And so right. it's a mm -hmm. matter of mindset. So made to move is so much right. more than to say like, Oh, you know, you just need to exercise, which we think we should, but it is so mm -hmm. much more. It's a mindset. And I love what you said about all that. It's about moving forward, <clears throat> making a plan, reaching out, making, making, right. setting yourself goals to move toward to, but we can't do that alone. It's really important to reach out, to mm -hmm. seek right. input and to move together. It's also a lot more fun mm -hmm. to move together into a particular direction to a particular goal. Right. And so, um, and so I, you know, as we think about some practical tips uh, right now, as it pertains to movement, um, can we have this conversation in our area of expertise? What is the difference mm -hmm. between okay. physical activity and exercise? Okay, so physical activity basically is just movement carried about carried out by your skeletal muscles that require energy. It's just if I am just moving around the kitchen or just you know just moving around the house. Um, but exercise basically is a planned, a structured, repetitive, intentional type of movement. So it's like you have a plan to walk four times a week. Yeah, you've got a plan to lift weights you know three times a week, something yeah. like that. That. That is the main difference between physical activity and exercise. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as physical activity goes, you can still burn a lot of calories. It's still moving your muscles and it's still moving your joints. And um, there are charts out right now that you can see how many calories do you burn? How many minutes does it take to, let's say, garden or yeah. Um, let's say, yeah, doing housework or, you know, something like that. There, You can still figure out how to keep moving because yeah. some people... Um, they'll say, well, I don't have time to do this exercise, but I walk all day. Yeah. You know, I'm a UPS guy. All right. So I have had UPS people in my practice that still are gaining weight. Yeah. So I would sit down with them. We'd go through their whole day. We'd try to figure out what they need to do. And it comes down to it. Well, maybe they just need to take even 20 minutes to 30 minutes, maybe under lunch hour and do some um, resistance exercise. Yeah. Yes. And he started doing that and started losing weight even though he was walking and going up and down the truck, lifting things for seven hours a day or so. Mm -hmm. So there's still some things that you can do. Um, but yes, that's, that's something that's really important as far as just, just keeping the motion going as far as physical activity, just moving in the day. You may think you may work out in the morning for an hour. Okay. And then you'll sit all day. Yeah. That, that is not a good thing either. They're just trying to find out that you're an active couch potato. That's what they call them, an active nice. couch potato. Yep. Okay. But right now, yeah, they, they don't want you to be that. Just sitting on, sit, I mean, exercising for an hour, and then the rest of the day you're not doing anything. Oh, I got my 10,000 steps. They're starting to find out you need to move pretty much every hour. Yep. Like get up and at least do something for five minutes. If you just even have to go up and down the stairs like you're in your house. Mm -hmm. 
I will do that in my classes. I have a two hour class that I teach and halfway through it, I say, all right, everyone get up, go, go up and downstairs, do something active before you come back. Okay. So yeah. you need to do something every hour to, to keep active, to keep physically active. Absolutely. I love it. It's great. So really in summary for everyone watching and listening, today is the day to really capture that as human beings, we need both. We need physical activity mm -hmm. and we need structured exercise. Physical activity means moving regularly throughout the day, sitting less, preferably moving every hour, not sitting long periods of time, mm -hmm. and to also incorporate structured exercise into your day. And structured mm -hmm. exercise Kim, we know should incorporate all the different components of fitness. Maybe quickly share what key components of fitness should everyone include in their program? Oh, cardio, of course, strength, um, endurance. And one thing I do want to want to say is the, one of the biggest complaints that I get is people saying, well, I'm just too tired to exercise. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, fatigue is will come to you. Um, fatigue will come to you if you don't exercise. Yeah. So I tell them, you know what? Just start, and you will be able to get more, um, more energy mm -hmm. with exercise. So, yep. So that's one thing. So yes, um, yes. Yeah, so make sure you're you're getting the cardio aspect. You're getting the um, like stretching aspect. You're getting the strength and the strength aspect, resistance exercise. All of those are very important. Yep. Yeah. Super. Very cool. And somebody posted here. I love it. Shoveling snow today. There's truth. Shoveling <laughs> snow can, I mean, you can classify that as, as exercise if you really go at it. Yes, you can. Oh, I remember doing that. Yeah. A long yeah. time ago. Uh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and the thing is, the thing is, um, again, while we want to focus on incorporating, um, you know, resistance training and flexibility and so on. And um, it is key to understand, again, you can do that even without equipment. So that's not an excuse, right? Oh, yeah. It's not an excuse mm -hmm. to say, mm -hmm. oh, well, I don't have, no, you can do it. You can make mm -hmm. do. And there's videos on how mm -hmm. to do that. And I want to encourage every single one. So every viewer, welcome to all the new viewers that are here. Every single viewer today, remember, you have been made to move, which means mm -hmm. if you understand that, and you understand that the best thing you can do for your body is to be in motion physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and to actually utilize what you've been given, you will maximize your potential. It'll impact the way you see the world. It'll impact the way you see the situation. It'll impact how you feel and how you can control your emotion. There are studies that show that people who are physically fit will also be emotionally more resilient. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Exactly. You know? Yep. And you, you'll improve your self image. It'll improve your outlook on life. Yes. And having that mindset is going to help you move forward. Absolutely. Make long decisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, Kim. Great stuff. Okay. We get excited when we talk about movement. We could go into more details. But I think what's yeah. really important okay. today is that we just capture this essential message that we don't underestimate the power of motion, especially right now, so that we can change our circumstances for the better. Um, one of the key questions I ask my guests, which I think are very important, so everyone watching, please take a pen. I've got a pen right here and a piece of paper. This is where we can really learn from each other and be inspired. Kim, if you had to say, what are the top five things in your life to thrive? What would you recommend okay. for thriving? Okay, so number one, um, I number one is having God first in your life. I mean, in this day and age and what's happening now, it's just something that can give you hope. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's number one, your spiritual life. I, I feel that's very, very important in my classes. i always start with a devotion and I always try to instill in my students that yes, that is something that is very important to have. And number two, of course, is taking care of your body. Your health is very important. Now under that falls tons of things like you're talking about your mental health and your physical health. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to break that down. Well, that's, that's the second thing, but un under that is so are so many different things. So let me finish with the three that I can, yeah. I can yeah. pack that a little bit more. Um, number three, um, I'm going to say, learn to be responsible, hundred percent responsible mm. for your life. I love it. Do not blame anyone else. What you do is your own issue or your own thing take responsibility for it. That is something that I think 
that people just need to learn. Mm -hmm. Blaming is not, is not the thing. Yeah. Um, number four, I think it is, you need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive others for what has been done, done to you. Mm -hmm. If you carry around all that baggage, it's going to weigh on your mind in the back of your mind all the time, like a cloud. If you can forgive others, forgive yourself for anything that has happened in the past, and, and move forward, that is going to open up so many things in your life. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is social competence. I mean, the thing is now we're all told to social distance, but it, or I think it should be called physical distance because I think we still we yes. are social beings. Yes, of course. We need to be social. That's right. So like when I go for a walk, sometimes I will call a friend on the phone and for that hour, we're yeah. going to talk. Absolutely. So if you can't, if you, you know, if you're not going to walk closer together, you can do things <clears throat> and still be yeah. socially, socially well with other people. You need to keep that up. So those are my main things. If Brilliant. you can Brilliant. Yeah, that Brilliant. Will help you thrive. These were such important key things that you put in there. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that you incorporated different aspects of that, of thriving. And, you know, the self-responsibility factor is huge. Um, and this is huge mm -hmm. in the subject of being made to move because, uh, listen, at the end of the day, you're the only one that can decide if, you get, if you're going to do something. You're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for Dr. Knowlton. You're not doing it for your teacher or your mother or your father or your brother. You're going to do it for your. It, it should be for yourself to improve your life, to take responsibility. If I want to thrive, not just now, but if I actually want to take positive action that will have consequences in the future, which we don't think that way. We always live now right. without thinking, okay, if I do do this and this and this, what will it do or what will it not do? And so it's time right. to start thinking about that and how, you know, on, on how that will um, change our future. And I really appreciate our mm -hmm. amazing producer, Denard, just capturing what you're saying, mm -hmm. Dr. Noel. So it says down here. So for everyone that wants to take a screenshot of that, I think these are vital tips of how to thrive and live your life more fully. And so with that being said, I am just so convinced again. Um, thank you so much for all your expertise and your enthusiasm and uh, great, great input also from your personal um, experiences. And even that you said, you know, now you're getting back into golfing. You do what you can yep. with what you have mm -hmm. and you maximize that. And uh, like I said, movement is something that's a gift. The fact, look, look, you can, you can wake up in the morning and you can say, oh, it's oh, it's so early. I don't feel like getting up. Oh man, do I have to get up? Or you can say, you open your eyes and you say, my legs work. My arms work. I can breathe. Mm -hmm. Yay, let me move. Yeah. You know, I mean, right. granted, I'm not a morning person either. It takes me a little bit further to mm -hmm. get super enthusiastic to get going. But the key thing is, where's your mindset? Where's your mindset? Right. Is your mindset in a place right. where you understand that movement is a privilege? Mm -hmm. That's important. And, and the thing is, we all know, let's say, let's talk about the, the morning, the morning um, exercise routine. We all know once you get past the point, you're fine. Yeah. You just need to understand and know that in your mind. You know what? After I just get up and get my clothes on, I'm I'm fine. Yeah. And just push through that. Yeah, that's that's one thing. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, um, I want to tell every single person watching now or watching the recording later, wherever you're watching this, remember every single one of you has been made extraordinary. Every single one of you is unique in your makeup and every single one of you has purpose. Every single one of you has been made to matter and every single one of you has been made to move and actually move in your life, not just physically, but be in motion in every single category, just like Dr. Knowlton talked about earlier. We can right. move emotionally, we can move in every particular way, and we are made to connect with other people. So wherever you are, whatever your current state, whatever, wherever your level of hope lies, in your life right now, if you don't have direction, if you don't have clarity, be assured that every single one of you has purpose and that there is a way, that there is a possibility and that everything can be looked at as an opportunity instead of a challenge. And so that is up to you. And this is what thriving is about to find that path. But you don't have to do that alone. That's the beauty in mm -hmm. it. Um, if, remember at Andrews University and around the world with our alumni, with our sister schools, mm -hmm. we've yeah. all believed together we're here because we believe we all have the chance 
to live our lives to the fullest potential because that's how we were created to be. So I want to encourage each one of you, wherever you are, whoever you are, please connect with us. Um, the Andrews account is huge. There's a lot of messages coming through, but please don't hesitate to connect with me. Um, my name is Dominique Gomelt. I'm the wellness director for Andrews University. If you want to connect, if you want to talk, please connect with me on Instagram at Dominique Alive. Um, Denard, if you can quickly put my handle, please, in the chat so that people can connect with me directly. If you have any questions, if you want to connect, if you need some inspiration, I will be glad to connect with you. And um, with that, I just want to mention that all Andrews University students who are in this program can obtain co-curricular credit. And the link for how, where to do that will be posted in the link at the Andrews University Instagram account. So you can click on that directly and arrive at your destination. So um, that will be up in just um, a quick second. And I want to encourage everyone to put this time slot on your calendars because Thrivecast is on air live every Tuesday at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday. And we will have amazing experts just like Dr. Knowlton. And I just lost my light, clearly, as you saw. So <laughs> that's the technological glitch at the end of the show, which is totally fine. And Kim, you get the last word of the day today. Oh, Okay. Before I leave, I have to do a shout out to the students that I know. So of course, Jake and Andy, Hannah, Michelle, Calvin, and Julianne and Jordan, you guys. We miss you here in Cali, but I know you're, you're thriving at Andrews University. So um, one thing I, I always start the quarter, well, we have quarters here um, with my students, and I think this is very a very good text for everybody to, to take a hold of is, um, there's two. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, it's the one about trusting the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, okay? Mm -hmm. And then Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. So whatever you're going through, um, movement is an important part of all of this, but also lean on God and make sure that you understand that there is a plan for you out there. Reach out, ask for help if you need to but understand that there is always someone out there willing and waiting to, to help you through this. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you for being on the show, Dr. Knowlton, and for those inspiring mm -hmm. words at the end. We're sending all of our love to wherever you are mm -hmm. on this planet, and I'll see you next Tuesday Bye. at 1130. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. See you later.